Nevada Grenchen is a well-known name amongst vintage watch collectors. Uh, well, the collectors aren't vintage, the watches are. Or actually, collectors of vintage watches are often vintage themselves, but that's besides the point. Nevada Grenchen watches from the 50s, 60s, and 70s are highly collectible because what the brand was doing during that time was pretty innovative and interesting. But like so many Swiss watchmakers, Nevada languished during the quartz crisis, a pretty common story. And another common story, in the past few years the brand has been revived by watch lovers and for watch lovers. Some people call these zombie brands, but I like to call them Phoenix brands. Nevada was founded in Grenchen, Switzerland in 1926 and it stayed family owned until 1976. During the brand's height, its watches were sold in the US under the name Croton. Same exact product, just different branding, like Volkswagen and Audi. I'm kidding. Or am I? Nevada changed hands several times until 2018 when the IP was bought by two watch industry veterans, and the result is what you see here. The revival of not just the brand, but the watches that made it famous. This is the Chronomaster Aviator Sea Diver, and this is the Depth Master. Let's start with the Depth Master. This watch debuted in 1965. Diving was huge. Dive watches were huge. Blancpain and Rolex had released competing dive watches 13 years earlier and the market was already full of options. But none of them could do what the Depth Master could do. Go to a depth of a thousand meters. A kilometer. Lord, why? Nevada marketed the Depth Master as probably the world's most waterproof watch, which I find very cute. Nothing on the market was even close. It wasn't until 13 years later that anyone beat the water resistance rating for this watch. It was the Rolex Sea Dweller in 1978. And this modern version of the Depth Master is true to the original, a thousand meters of water resistance. And on top of that, it has a helium escape valve for all that recreational saturation diving you love to do. The watch is 39 millimeters across, 13.3 millimeters thick, 47 millimeters long, and uses 20 millimeter straps. It also has drilled lugs, which is a nice touch. It lists for $1,219 on this bracelet or $988 on a strap. Inside the watch is a Soprod P024 movement. I really don't know much about Soprod movements. The brand was founded to compete with Solita and ETA. I guess I know that much. So it's assumed that the movement is as reliable as its competition, but I don't have any experience with the P024. Okay, now this dial, and more specifically, the numerals. This watch has become known as the Pac-Man. It's those six and nine numerals. They're reminiscent of everyone's favorite ghost gobbling friend. But of course the watch came out more than a decade before the video game, so the Pac-Man nickname wasn't attached until much later. But it's helped the watch become a minor celebrity. On my 7 inch wrist, the Pac-Man wears small, comfortable for sure, but it feels and kind of looks like a 37 or 38 millimeter watch to me. And even with the cushion shaped case, those usually wear a little larger, but not this. I think it's that wide bezel that's having the shrinking effect. I think for a lot of people this size is going to work really well, and I like it. The beads of rice bracelet looks the part, but it's not great. The clasp especially feels pretty cheap, thin with a sharp edge, and it's difficult for me to snap closed. I almost always recommend getting a bracelet with a watch, but in this case I say save your $200 and go for the Tropic style rubber strap that Nevada sells. The rubber option is great, and I know that because it's what I've been wearing the Chronomaster on. The Chronomaster Aviator Sea Diver came out in 1963, just two years before the Pac-Man. There must have been a sale on words or something because Chronomaster, Aviator, Sea, Diver, the name is a bit much. The innovative part of the Chronomaster was that it was a water resistant chronograph. In 1963 that was relatively uncommon. And even today, a chronograph with 100 meters of water resistance, they're out there but for $1800, not many. Aside from the water resistance, another feature of the watch is that the bezel features two scales. One for counting up to 60, and the other for tracking a second time zone with a 12 hour scale. Now, I can barely read those 12 hours with my quadragenarian eyes, but maybe professional pilots in the 60s had better eyesight than I do? That was a thing, right? The watch is 38 millimeters across, 13.8 millimeters thick, and 46.5 millimeters long. 
It also uses 20 millimeter straps and has drilled lugs. Like I mentioned, it's water resistant to 100 meters. For $17.99, you get the watch on either this Tropic style rubber strap or a leather strap. You can also get this with the black dial or with tan loom or a different dial and different handset. And those are just the manual references. For a little more money and a little more thickness, there are also automatic versions. The movement inside this though is the manually wound Solita SW510 MBHB. It's becoming a popular movement in watches in the $2,000 to $4,000 price range, which makes this one of the more affordable pieces to use the 510. There's a lot to like here. How it wears and looks on my 18 centimeter wrist, for starters. I had initially thought that 13.8 millimeters thick by 38 millimeters wide would be a strange proportion, but it's great. If you're used to vintage watches or other smaller chronographs like ones from Zinn, you'll know how wearable this size is. The lugs have some really nice angles, the box crystal looks great, and I like that there's a white dial option, but if I had to choose, I might go for the black dial for one reason. It's difficult for me to read this handset in some light. The hands are flat, and in direct light they kind of blend in with the white dial. If the hands were beveled or angled, I think this wouldn't be a problem, but as is, I've had issues. And one more minor issue. Because this is manually wound, you gotta use the crown in its default position, a bunch. Well, I found that sometimes as I'm winding the watch, I'm accidentally moving the friction fit bezel. So either the crown needs to be a little bigger, or the bezel needs to be a little tighter, or I finally need to get that thumb reduction surgery that I've been putting off. The Depth Master and the Chrono Master, two pretty interesting and appealing revivals. I'm not really into vintage style watches, but I do respect what Nevada is doing and for the most part the quality to price ratio here. And speaking of price, the brand has a special code for you, the victim, I mean audience of my videos. If you use the code your terrific hashtag strap when you buy a watch, you'll get an additional strap for free. Now I don't get shit out of this deal, no watch, no money. I don't do that kind of collaboration. I just thought it would be cool if some of you got a free strap from watching my videos. You've put up with me, you've earned it. So if you like the look and stories of vintage watches, but like me, you want a watch built in a modern way, give Nevada a look. It's got some very capable and well-priced watches with a lot of attention given to those details that make vintage watch collectors swoon. I mean collectors of vintage watches and, and probably vintage collectors too.